In today's video, we're going to play around with bismuth, a meltable, very colorful geometric metal. Guys, a lot of you have asked for a while, and we have wanted for a while, to play around with bismuth. It's a very cool metal, um, most well known for its tendency to form very cool geometric shapes when it crystallizes along with some amazing iridescent looking colors. I mean, just look at what this stuff does in nature. This naturally harvested crystal. Isn't it gorgeous? It looks like it might be something. I'm thinking a seal. It does look pretty much like a seal. Here's the basic idea. We've managed to get our hands on some large quantities of bismuth, a metal that melts at 550 degrees Fahrenheit and cools down to form some very neat geometric crystals. We want to try making some of the crystals, we want to try making some geodes, and we generally just want to try playing around with and learning about this metal. Guys, this bismuth was sent to us <laughs> by a guy called the Bismuth Smith. The skull, camel, and lion, they're a form of geode mm -hmm. where you pour the metal Take into a, a the mold, inside. it cools down a little bit, and then you pour all of the extra and you get this, it's kind of like a slush cast out of metal. And we're saying you or we could do this. No, 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 this is the Bismuth Smith. He is amazing. Check this out, guys. This stuff is gorgeous. So this is the geo. So he pours it into the mold, pours it out. It forms these beautiful little crystals similar to the larger chunks. So he sent us the most Bismuth I have ever seen in one place ever. Um, I've seen a few YouTubers uh, play with it. Crazy Russian Hacker. Uh, Nile Red actually extracted some from Pepto Bismol. That was phenomenal. This stuff is 86% the and weight of lead. lead. Yeah. <laughs> so it's very heavy. Oh my here. goodness. I mean, like, this, is, this my... is not lightweight stuff. Okay. Yep. That's That weighs as much as one of my arms. And then we actually have some that we haven't opened yet, which is going to be more of these little figures, I believe. So we're going to do that and see what else we've got here. Is that an owl? Yes. Or oh it's something else that looks gosh. like an owl. It's a rainbow owl! Bear. Bear! Oh no! Ugly toad catfish. Yes! What? <gasps> Look! Why is ugly toad catfish weird? Because we have Hedwig and now we've got Trevor! Ah. We don't exactly know how he's getting these colors. We're gonna let him keep that secret because holy crap this is amazing. But you can see the silvery inside and then this piece sort of went like that. That's okay. So I want to try something before we start any of the other experiments. Apparently this stuff melts at about 525 degrees Fahrenheit. I actually just want to see if I can melt the surface of this because the oxidization is what kind of causes this color. It actually reminded me when we first pulled it out of the box, it looks almost like the surface of oxidized sodium, which was kind of interesting. The inside is very silvery. And as time goes on, you get this color. So I want to go ahead and try to melt the surface of this. I don't necessarily need to actually put it on anything because it has one of the lowest thermal conductivities of any metal, meaning that the heat's not going to transfer. But I'm still going to go ahead and put it on a stainless steel pot. We were kind of giggling over the fact that this <laughs> cheapo stainless steel pot had sort of a business looking handle. It's not. But let's go ahead and see what it looks like if I just melt the surface. It's so heavy, guys. As soon as the heat comes off, it starts to oxidize. And solid. But look, it, it went kind of gold coppery. Oh, it definitely of... got a lot of color. Yes! Yes! Good. Honestly, let's just take a look at that before it well. Look at the look colors at in these that. grips. I'm so and even like the splash down parts in the uh, pot have changed to cool colors. Okay, let's look at the center before it does anything else because look at that copper. It looks like we took that oxidization and it's dripped here and now this is staying coppery. So why did you choose a steel pot? Part of it is because if you use aluminum, it can leach into the bismuth. That will ruin the effect, like it won't do the colored thing anymore. And stainless steel is supposed to not do that. Look at the drip pattern. It cooled so fast it was cooling as more molten bismuth was hitting it. So you can actually see these little sort of wrinkles where the drips were adding on. You saw how fast that was being poured. That is amazing. For a very long time, bismuth was considered to be the heaviest atomic mass that was stable. In 2003, it was discovered that it is, and I quote Wikipedia, extremely weakly radioactive. Its only primordial isotope, bismuth 
decays via alpha decay with a half-life of more than a billion times the estimated age of the universe. So that means these blocks just sitting around, if we left them sitting here for approximately 1300 billion years. They just go away. They disappear entirely. How disappointing is that? Are you gonna hit that with something? Yeah. You don't know if it shatters? Yeah. Try harder. If you could do what you're doing, but better. That hit your foot. How's your foot? It just, nothing at all. Okay, I sweet. I basically forgot um, that it hit my foot as it hit my foot. Awesome. Yeah. Ah, ha, ha. Okay, it's hot. Middle is just warm. Melt it? Let's try melting it and see if we it. can get any crystals out of it. This melts at 520 degrees Fahrenheit, but to get the best results with making crystals, we were told we wanted to get it up to seven or 800 degrees Fahrenheit and to look for a certain color change in the surface. Instead of just doing it on a stove, we're actually going to use our foundry. We think that'll go faster, get to a higher heat. Then once it's melted properly and like we've got it all set up to make the crystals, we're going to let it sit in the foundry in the same spot, which should insulate it a little bit, help it cool down slower. And we are told that also helps with better crystal growth. Okay, so we've let this all melt down. Nate added a little bit more. And it's, you said it's registering somewhere between five and 800 degrees Fahrenheit right now? It was at 700, it's dropping down a bit. You know, we're at 680, 670 Fahrenheit. Oh, it's If we go for a smoother cold. spot, it drops down to like 600. And I think that is what we want. What we're aiming for was about 700, 800 degrees. At this point, we just wanna let it cool down. And because there's a lot of radiant heat, in the foundry, it's gonna take a while for it to cool down. It won't cool down terribly quickly, and that's supposed to be a good thing. It's supposed to help with slower crystal formation. Now, it's probably gonna take us several tries for a few reasons. One, because we've never done it before, but also because apparently the pot itself is going to change a little bit to, to facilitate crystal growth better. It's true, we made this part of the pot match the handle quite nicely I'm now. wondering if it was meant to do that in the first place, so maybe mm. this might not be the pot. We'll see, we'll see. Said stainless steel. I'm gonna, I think it's gonna be just fine. All right, update, it's been a few days. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the experimentation that's been going on, I was doing by myself because I had time to come in and work on this and it takes practice to do this. Um, so You say not, practice, it looks like you had a lot of success. Uh, depending on how you define success. I did get some cool results. Pretty colors and cool patterns. Not, not as cool as we're hoping though. Um, okay. I, I filmed with my camera some of the results. I had a hard time filming the actual process is because I needed my hands and I didn't want to set up tripods and stuff just while I was trying to get these things going. It, um, it kind of looks like you've created the ruins of Asgard in here. We do have like what looks like <laughs> cities and this is kind of fun. So what happens is these like rectangular pillar ones, those start to grow off of the bottom of the pot. Wow. The crystallized form of the bismuth is slightly less dense than the liquid form of the bismuth. It's kind of like ice. When it's solid, it actually floats. So those start to crystallize and form on the bottom. And then, and then when I turn the heat back on, it melts where it's connected and then it just floats up. And so you'll get like these little cityscapes just float up out of the top of the, t the bismuth and it looks really cool. It does and it also looks like they'd be extremely strong but these are incredibly fragile. They like, break pretty easily, yeah. Yep, just I, snap I right wait. off. I wait, I want that as a necklace. I mean, they're neat. We're ready to try it again, see if we can get some good crystals. Let's go for it. Hello, I'm on fire. <laughs> it's already making noise. Yeah, we're gonna hear the bismuth making quite a bit of noise as it cracks I really love and that. changes size and shape. Just to get this going more quickly and evenly, we are gonna leave that lid on, get that melted down, and ideally we'll get it just barely melted down. We don't want it to be, you know, this foundry gets up to 2,000 degrees. We're shooting for six, maybe 700 degrees total. Uh, it melts at a little over 500 to get it more uniformly even. Apparently it's good to get it up to six or seven. So it is kind of tricky to do just on a stove top, but uh, that's why we're using the foundry. All right, now it's got sort of that yeah, we, ashy gold top and we want it blue. We've got melted bismuth here, the whole pot, nice and liquid. And what we want to do now is to try and remove all of this slag. I want as smooth of a surface as I can get here. Because anywhere that isn't smooth is going to be a spot for crystals to start forming. And I want to choose where the crystals start forming, not the slag. All right, now, this is actually all entirely too hot. <laughs> so we need to let it cool down, but we don't need to let it cool down quickly. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take our foil, and this is mostly just to stop anything from falling down. Into it and. Into it, yeah. We don't want like bits of our kaol 
landing in it. And we'll just come check this about every five minutes. And how we're going to check it is we're just gonna take a spoon and we're gonna scoop out a little spot in the very middle of the pot. And what we're looking for is a color change, the right kind of color change. And it's gonna go through a point that right now, if I scooped it, we would just get iridescence. It would kind of go through all the colors right away as I was scooping. It'll get to a point where like I'll scoop it and it'll just be purple and it'll just be blue. It might be another color, but what we're looking for is kind of a copper tone. Um, and for it to hold that color for more than just a couple seconds. If you scoop and it goes copper, great. But normally, you know, if it goes copper and then like two seconds later it's blue and then two seconds later it's purple, gotta keep waiting until it's at just the right point and we wanna keep doing that. Uh, so yeah, about every five minutes we'll check on it, see where it is. All right. I think we're now at a point where we can pull the crystal out and I'm immediately gonna put it in this pot, cover it with this lid and then fold this over just to help insulate it a little bit so it cools down a little bit slower. Be cool, be cool, be cool, be cool, be cool, be cool. Looks cool, looks like it's gonna be cool. Looks like it's probably cool. That looks kinda cool. Yes! Oh, you got it, you got it! So now, we're gonna try making geodes. This is a bit more of an experiment. I have not done this before. So we've got our mold here. I'm just gonna pour this in. Our mold and the sand in the frying pan have been in the oven at 500 degrees. We're just gonna let that sit for like five, 10 minutes and see if the shell starts to form around it. Then we're gonna try and pour out the extra that should still be liquid and... And then we're gonna find out if Nate's audio is on because mine sure isn't. It's a good question. <laughs> We've got some cool results here. We so do. these are some of the ones we've made. Mm -hmm. um, there were some others that I made them and then just melted them back down because I thought we could get some better results. But you got amazing color this one, on this one. This right? one's pretty mediocre, but that one I like quite a bit. Yeah, pretty dang good colors on that one. Now you like, is from what I understand, people really, really love this gradient that you see. These rainbow gradients. I'm very much in love with these blue and purple tones. It I looks guess like this space. is. I guess this is like the easier color to get. Mm -hmm. The purple, gold, blue tones. <laughs> Oh, look at that. I'm in love. Whoa. That actually is really, really slick. Like that molded really nicely. Guys, if you think these are as cool as we do, head on over to thebismuthsmith.com and take a look at these. His work is just phenomenal. He sells several different varieties of things. We've got like the molded and casted shapes. He has the crystals like these and these. He made and, this. Yeah, and lots of different sizes and color patterns. Really gonna be like the best stuff you're gonna find online. So definitely go check that out. Guys, that's it for today, but you know we've always got more for you to see. Click that box up the top to check out our most recent video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.